In this lecture, we're going to introduce the fundamental theorem of calculus and do various examples. So the theorem is stated as follows. If a function, which we'll call, say, little f, is continuous on a, b, the closed interval a, b, and big F is an antiderivative, antiderivative of little f on a, b, then we have the following super powerful formula. I mean, this is really, really huge. By the way, an antiderivative means that if you take the derivative of big F, it's going to be equal to little f uh, everywhere on this interval. So the fundamental theorem of calculus says that if you have the definite integral from A to B of little f with respect to x, so normally we had to use um, you know, limits and stuff. We had to take the limit of a sum, and the process was very, very difficult. This gives us a formula. This is equal to the antiderivative of little f, so big F, evaluated at the uppermost limit of integration, minus the antiderivative of little f, so big F, evaluated at the lower limit of integration. So it's a really cool equation because it relates everything we were doing with definite integrals back to antiderivatives, right? So it's a big, big step, and it makes the computations so much easier, right? So much easier. Um, a couple remarks that um, need to be mentioned here. So perhaps uh, the most important remark, or an important remark, is that you don't need to write the constant of integration anymore. So whenever you're doing definite integrals, you don't need um, the constant of integration. So don't need, don't need to add C. And two, the second remark uh, is to be careful. <laughs> so we're working, we're gonna be working with numbers now. We'll have a lot of fractions. Um, so you wanna just take your time and you know go through things slowly let's start with a simple example uh, that we can work out so you see how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus so let's start off simple let's say we're integrating uh, from one to two and we just have x with respect to x so x dx so we're integrating uh, x with respect to x so basically According to the formula, it's going to be big F of B minus big F of A. So typically what you do um, is you just integrate it, and then you don't write um, the C. So here we'll use the power rule. So you add 1 to the exponent, so it's X squared, and then you divide by 2. So it'll be X squared over 2. And then normally you'd put a plus C, but you don't have to put a plus C. Um, just to indicate that you don't have to, I'm going to put it this time just so you see what happens. So this is just the antiderivative, right? This is wrong. We have to have the antiderivative evaluated uh, at the top limit of integration, the upper limit, and then subtract it from the antiderivative evaluated at the lower limit. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna use a double bracket like this, and I'm gonna put a one here, and I'm gonna put a two here. And what this notation tells you is that you first plug in the two, right, because this, this is your big F of X right here. Let me just circle it. This is big F of X. Right? So if you plug in a two, you get two squared over two plus C, right? That's, that's big F of two, right, because you plugged in two into big F minus, and then plugging in one to big F, it's big F of one. Let me see that. So let me just scroll down here and write it for you. So this is big F of two, and this is big F of one, right? Just using the formula, 
which again is f of b minus f of a. I think a lot of people don't actually think about the formula, which is fine. You don't really have to, but I just want to show you that we are actually using it, right? We're actually using it. And I think that's lost uh, in calculus because you take a calculus course and then you learn how to do this and you just keep doing it um, without thinking about what's happening. So every time you do a definite integral, you're using um, the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is super key. And so what happens here is you get a four over two, which is two, right? Because this is two squared, so it'll be two plus c. You can actually drop the parentheses here, so it'll be two plus c, right? Because that's four over two. And this is minus one half minus c, right? minus one half minus c. Oh, this is cool, right? Look, the c's cancel. That's why you don't have to write the plus c, right? So, um, so two is really four halves. Just thinking of it as a number over two, and then minus one half. So that's going to be three halves. So much quicker than the approach we would take uh, using uh, limits and all of that stuff. So um, very, very fast way to, to find um, you know, definite integrals now, thanks to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, a comment here on the notation, by the way. So just uh, some comments on notation. Nota notation, <laughs> it's not that hard to spell it. Notation. Okay, so in this example we had, uh, it was a one to two x dx. And um, I wrote it with a double bracket, right? You could do a single bracket. So you could do x squared over two, and then you could do this, okay? Or if you prefer, um, you, could, you could simply uh, use a line. So you could do x squared over two with a line like this. Um, you can use a double bracket, right? You could do x squared over two and a double bracket. So all of these are acceptable notations. Just use whatever you feel best fits the situation. Um, I think that's the best way. So I usually do the line or the bracket. I, I go back and forth between notations. Let's see if I can find um, another example that's a little bit um, harder that we can do uh, just for practice. Um, I guess I'll make one up, here we go. Let's see, let's try um, just again, maybe let's put a zero here and um, a three here, okay? And um, actually let's make this, make this a pi. Do a trig function, let's integrate um, cosine x with respect to x, dx. So, you know, if we were doing this using the limit process, it would be much more challenging. So thankfully, <laughs> we can use all of our integration formulas now to compute definite integrals, which is, which is huge. So here, we're integrating cosine. So we're thinking, what's a function whose derivative is going to give you cosine? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So this is equal to sine x. And then I'm just going to use a single bracket here. Then you put the zero here and the pi here. Notice I didn't write the plus c, right? We know it's not necessary because uh, the plus c's, they, they cancel each other out. And this notation means that you first plug in the pi, and then you subtract, and then you plug in the zero. So you plug in pi, so you get the sine of pi, minus, and then here you get the sine of zero. On the unit circle, um, sine is the y-coordinate, right? So here's the unit circle. This is zero, this is pi, and you see that sine is the y-coordinate on the unit circle. So at zero, it's zero, at pi, it's zero. So you get zero minus zero, so you get zero. So that's the answer there. Intuitively, let's think about what this means. We're integrating cosine uh, from zero to pi. So if you think about the graph of cosine, so cosine of zero is one, right? And then cosine of pi over two is zero. And then cosine of pi is negative one. So this is pi here, okay, this is pi. And so we're basically integrating, I'll use a different color. This is kind of an interesting example. I just picked one and um, all examples can be interesting if you, well, most examples. <laughs> so, so integrating here, we got the area under the curve, right, from zero to pi over two. But then over here, it's like we got the opposite of the area under the curve. So if you add these up, um, you're going to get zero. So if you add this piece here to this piece here, this piece here is the opposite of this piece, right? So you end up getting zero, which is what we got in our definite integral.